So what's coming up, right? I mean, who doesn't know that the government, the beautiful government of ours, is looking to change um, refrigerants, right? Anybody that's been in the industry long enough can likely remember the R22 to R410A change. Well, now we're changing from R410A. Certain areas of the country, California, have already made that shift, right? Um, and to accommodate that shift, we currently have, we are currently shipping, currently offering um, our newest line of monoblock air to water heat pumps, the R32 series. We use R32 refrigerant. Uh, the need for refrigerant, as described by, did I say our beautiful government? Yeah, our beautiful government is that we need to use a refrigerant that has a lower GWP or global warming potential. Right, so it has to be below 675, I believe. Um, uh, has to be below 700, and I believe we um, click in there at just under 700 with the R32 refrigerant. So our R32 series of heat pumps, okay, come in three different sizes. All right, they are all a cold climate design. Okay, and again, just like the others, simple, advanced, and easily flexible um, for all of your applications. We've got cooling capacities on the smaller unit of a, up to a ton and a half, the middle unit up to three tons, and the upper uh, larger unit to a little over four tons. And then heating capacity, very similar, right? Maximum of 22,000 BTUs, a little over 40,000 for the 40 unit, and up over 70,000 BTUs capacity for the, um, for the, uh, the large unit. These units are very capable of reaching and surpassing that 140 degree delivered water temperature. Here's the switch, right? The graph, we probably should have led with this one. Maybe we'll switch it around next time. Um, R32, 675, right? GWP, R410A, 2088. Um, thank you, government. We need to change our refrigerants. Um, Although this is a mandatory shift, okay, um, unless things change the way we understand it and it is written, um, any units using 410A refrigerant are still very much um, high-end, top-of-the-line units and can be sold um, very easily throughout the rest of this year and all of next as we transition to uh, through this transition period of from one refrigerant to the next. Here's a little breakdown on the three different sizes. Again, um, probably one of the coolest um, notes about this that are not on this slide, unfortunately, is the much lower pressure drop on these units than uh, on previous units, okay? Um, so essentially, to get the proper amount of flow required, you can actually get away with using a smaller, more energy efficient circulator, right? Smaller circulator also uh, equals a lower cost circulator, okay? These are also all single phase 208, 230 units. Please be aware of um, capacities, ranges, uh, flow rates, and things like that. Again, your rep or local distribution can help walk you through any questions you may have with proper sizing, which always begins with a proper load calculation. Oh, hey, there was two, two slides, I guess I made a mistake. This is the slide that shows the magic, right? We go down to the sound, um, it's highlighted there on the left, followed across 41, 43, 46 decibels. <clears throat> Excuse me, these things are whisper quiet, okay? Absolutely whisper quiet. Hydronic, we go down, we've got uh, water temperatures in the 140s, one inch tappings. The big thing here, look at the pressure drops, right? Rated pressure drops, very, very low compared to some of the equipment we've seen previously. This just allows us the opportunity to have, again, much more flexibility with our piping and pumping options. Panasonic compressors, variable speed, fans and compressors in all three of these units. Super excited. We have some of these out about being installed and operational, super Super quiet, super efficient units. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, wiring, okay, again, might look like something hot and heavy. 
but I can promise you it's very much similar to everything we've seen in the past. High voltage wires come in, um, could be anywhere between 208 and 230 volts, L1, L2, neutral and ground, okay? It's important to note that um, 208, these units are compatible with the use of 208 voltage, right? That's another bonus of these units, okay? Remote heat cool, remote on off, DSW on off, heat cool on off, and so on. What does that tell you, right? Hey, caution, the remote on off, remote heat cool, heat cool on off, and DHW enable inputs are for voltage free contact relays only, right? We're not going to add any voltage to those. Otherwise, what's going to happen? We could break some stuff. And then we're very likely, if not guaranteed, to not give you a warranty because we're warning you so many times. The touchscreen display looks a little different on these units compared to our 410A version, okay? Um, just as cool, probably a little fancier, just as easy to use. Uh, allows you to do time, curves, uh, smart grid connections, electric heaters, um, easy to access fault codes if anything were to ever happen. Um, so super, super easy to use and intuitive uh, touchscreen controls for these units as well. We'll do a, a quick breakdown um, so we don't get lost in too many charts here. Um, however, here's the CC3218. So this is the smaller ton, ton and a half unit. Again, we see these graphs. The lower dotted line is the base, base um, capacity based on the lowest um, compressor speed, right? So 30 hertz, right? The lowest turn down of the unit. And the red line in this slide being the highest um, turn up, if you will, of the unit, right? So anywhere in, in the middle, you do a, draw a couple of lines on these charts and you'll be able to see, based on your design temperature, how many BTUs this unit could handle. And then you can see, again, uh, the range of COP or efficiency also changes as temperatures get higher and the um, compressor itself uh, ranges up and down, right, in uh, capacity. Cooling performance, the same. I'm not going to dwell on these too much again. Um, these are also can be found right now today, but not this moment, on spacepack.com's uh, literature tab in their website when you download the installation manuals and submittal sheets. The middle unit, um, CC32-40, heating performance. This is just 120 degree delivered water temp. Um, again, a great range of capacity and efficiency. Cooling, heating again, a great range uh, of heating capacity and heating efficiency. Cooling as well, right? Coming soon, okay, all of the CC32 units have the ability um, to link to what we have, what we call a warm link app that allows us to remotely see kind of what the unit's doing. This is very much a service tool and not, I repeat, not intended to be used um, for to be used by end users, right? Not to be used by the homeowner. This is not a, hey, I need to turn my heat up or down. I'm gonna use this. This is, this is a service tool, right? This is a service tool that will uh, allow the contractor, the installing contractor to look at the system to identify if there is uh, how it's running, if there's something that needs to be addressed, or if it's just happy, right? Think about it this way. If maybe there's an install and the customer calls contractor, calls you the contractor, assuming that everyone on here is the contractor. Hey, my system's not working. Okay, well, I have you registered in the app. I'm going to turn it on. You open the app, you can see that the Joneses unit is running perfectly fine. You then go back to the Joneses on the phone and say, hey, what's not happening, right? Oh, well, little Joey's room's not getting hot or little Joey's room's not getting cold. Okay, well, that's certainly better than running all the way out there and finding, thinking or preparing for something that's not actually happening, right? Knowing that it's not a heat pump related concern and maybe it's more of an infrastructure or, hey, the no batteries or the batteries are dead in the thermostat concern, that's on a contractor point. That's gonna help you decide who you're gonna send to the job, right? It's certainly going to be able to do that. The other benefit to this is, say you are on a job, say you're doing commissioning, say you have a question about parameter settings or defrost controls or so on. 
you can log into this unit. You can call SpacePack technical support. We can log into this unit. We can see exactly what is going on simultaneously, right? This isn't a fully launched project yet or a, a product yet, right? But it is currently available on all units. So anything that we do uh, as far as uh, complete usage is, is in its infant stages at the moment, right? We've used it quite a bit around the country. It works great. I use it at my house. If I was in person right now, I'd turn my uh, phone open here and I would show you what my unit's currently doing, if it's calling for cooling or not. Um, at least I hope it is. So a couple of uh, pictures of an install. This I believe was up in the Pacific Northwest. A couple of four ton units here. 